That's a scene from Hulu's The United States versus Billie Holiday, with actress Andrew Day up for an Oscar tomorrow night for her performance in the starring role. The film explores the federal government's targeting of African Americans in an earlier version on the war on drugs and taking aim at Holiday in particular. And not just for her drug addiction, but for her insistence on performing a radically controversial protest song about lynching. Strange Fruit was written not by an African-American activist, but by a Jewish high school teacher from New York. And just a warning, the photo you'll see that inspired the song is disturbing. What was he like? He was one of the funniest people you'd ever want to meet. But he was also, we learned, one of the angriest people you'd ever want to meet. What was it that drove that anger? You know, we had slavery, we had Reconstruction, we had lynching, we have Jim Crow today. I mean, when are we ever going to be what we claim to be? Brothers Michael and Robert Mirapol are proud sons, even prouder of their father's legacy. The connection to Abel Mirapol and Strange Fruit is very powerful because here's the man who wrote the anti-lynching anthem. An anthem made famous by blues legend Billie Holiday. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. But inspired by a horrific scene from Marion, Indiana in 1930. It was a very specific picture. That picture with the man pointing and the bodies hanging and the woman next to him kind of with a little smile on her face. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. You know, this was a cultural carnival and, and Abel Mirapol was horrified by that. Abel Mirapol penned Bitter Fruit, but changed the name when he set it to music. His wife, Anne, would occasionally sing it at union meetings. But in 1939, this songbird recorded it and gave it flight. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Billy made it her own, and she's the one who gave it to the world. And she's the one who paid the price for yeah. for doing that. <laughs> As the film The United States versus Billie Holiday shows, her version ignited anger, activism, and anxiety, primarily from the commissioner of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, who viewed the lyrics as dangerous. Harry Anslinger relentlessly pursued Holiday for refusing to stop singing the song. That ultimately landed her in prison. What is the most powerful line to you? The pastoral scene of the gallon south, the bulging eyes and the twisting mouth. You know, it reverberated very strongly with me. My favorite lines are, scent of magnolia sweet and fresh and the sudden smell of burning flesh. Mm -hmm. And you notice the brilliance too, that the sensory difference. I'm talking about a visual image. He's talking about a uh, smell. Abel uses in that little poem all the senses to evoke a response. Here's a fruit for the crows to pluck. He would sometimes lament that it seemed that Strange Fruit did not have the kind of impact that he hoped it would have. In the, it was in the late 40s that the text of Strange Fruit was sent to every member of Congress in support of an anti-lynching bill. And anti-lynching bills were constantly destroyed by filibusters in the Senate throughout the 1940s. And we have it again. We, you know, in, in, it, again, I like to say that history doesn't repeat itself. It echoes. It reverberates. While an English teacher at DeWitt Clinton High School in the Bronx, Writer James Baldwin and poet County Cullen were among his students. Mirapol wrote Strange Fruit under the pseudonym of Lewis Allen, perhaps because of his political views. The song means a lot to me, Joe. Mirapol wrote it and he's a f commie. Right, come on. I don't care, all right? 
It was that association to the Communist Party that put Mirapol and his wife in the orbit of two orphaned brothers. Their parents had been sent to the electric chair by the United States government. Being the children of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg in the 1950s, it would be like being the children of Osama bin Laden uh, after 9-11. At the height of the Cold War, the Rosenbergs, American citizens, were convicted of spying for the Soviet Union. After their deaths, the Mirapoles were among those who tended to their two young sons. You met your dad at a Christmas Eve party. December 24th, 1953. Whose house was it? You tell the story. W.E.B. Du Bois, the great, great African-American historian, activist, philosopher, politician, you name it. I remember that, that party. In fact, I remember coming in and there were all these presents under a tree. And someone told me they were all for us, uh, for my brother and me. So why were they all just for you? Because our parents had been executed and this Board was a community of support. What was the most important thing to your father? Sense of fairness. His wow. politics came from his heart. And you could see that with his adoption of us and you could see that in, in Strange Fruit. I've been thinking about this a lot, uh, particularly since the insurrection on January 6th, the attack on the Capitol, and that image of the scaffold and the chance of hang Mike Pence. It, it was a modern day lynch mar, but it was a failure, but it was still, that's what a lot of the intent was there. The Strange Fruit's 80, more than 80 years old now, uh, and yet it is so current because you have reverberations of that kind of lynching. Strange Fruit's gonna be relevant until cops start getting convicted for murdering black people. And uh, when that happens, maybe then Strange Fruit will be a relic of a barbaric past. But until then, it's a mirror on a barbaric present. Here is a strange and bitter That conversation obviously happened before the verdict uh, this week. Uh, I have to tell you, th these brothers told me that the music, the melody of this song, they believe came from a Jewish prayer song that their father b b was really truly loved. Um, he, he was a prolific writer of other music as well. He in fact wrote a song for Frank Sinatra, Old Blue Eyes, called That's, when Amer That's What America Means to Me. Uh, such an incredible tale. Yeah. yeah. Haunting still always to hear her sing that song. Yeah. All right. Nice job, Michelle. Thank you.